This podcast includes adult language and graphic depictions of murders and criminal acts. This is a comedy-style true crime podcast. We do our best not to make fun of victims or victims' families. However, we do introduce our sense of humor while telling graphic stories. If the mix of comedy and true crime is not your thing, this may not be the right podcast for you. Audience discretion is advised. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Edward Theodore Gein. That's right, good old Ed Gein, also known as the Butcher of Plainfield or the Plainfield Ghoul. He's an American murderer, suspected serial killer, and body snatcher. Gein's crimes gathered widespread notoriety in 1957 after authorities discovered he had exhumed corpses from local graveyards and fashioned keepsakes from their bones and skin, later inspiring some of the most famous horror movie characters. He also confessed to killing two women. We'll talk about Ed and play the wheel of death on this episode of Two Murder Morons. Hey. Season two, episode two. Uh, hey, I am impressed. I am too. That you kept track of what episode it is. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I can't remember what the date is, but at least I know the show. True. I honestly could. I was like, oh, God, what's he going to say? Oh, yeah. God, what's the right answer? I don't even know. You never know. Yeah. That's I mean, true. yeah. So I just said, oh, I don't really do anything anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, anywho, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Two Murder Morons. You're, My name is Andy. I am Mike, <laughs> and I, I usually have a saying, but today I don't. What's up with that? We are on one tonight, man. I don't know. What's weird? It's weird. Well, because we, yeah, that's what, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> well, usually I say, my name's Andy, and sitting across, across from me is, is my good, buddy Mike. Yeah. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> and you introduced yourself, and I think it threw you off even. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> man. It's a whole different intro, man. Why do you look like Chris Farley right now? Oh, <laughs> seriously? I mean, I do. I, I could lose some weight, but Chris Farley? I think it's the glasses. You have the, um, what's the character's name? The Oh, uh, the, yeah. Uh, in a van down by. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the hell? Uh, Fo- Matt Foley. Yeah, Matt right? Foley, yeah. Yeah. It was Foley, yeah. You kind of have that look going on right now. Uh, thanks a lot, man. Free. Oh, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it and run. We'll go with it. Good Lord. Well, welcome to the show. You can see it's going to be a fun episode. Yeah, yeah. Today. Hey, yeah. And, you know, uh, while we're at it, you know, we're uh, just looking at, you know, looking at things. And that I am aware, you know, we have 221 subscribers. Yes. You know, for season one, that's pretty good. I would say that's pretty good, too. Considering we really didn't think we'd even be there. I, I didn't, man. I really thought, you know, it would be like us and friends kind of watching yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool when people you don't know subscribe and people have been commenting on our episodes and asking questions and stuff like that. It's, yeah. it's kind of a cool and thing. And we got a member. We got a member we don't, you know, we didn't really know. Yeah, we got to buy me a coffee member. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, thanks, thanks to her. You know, thanks, we appreciate that very much. Yes, Rachel, again. Rachel, thank again, you. Thank yeah. you. I, I think we're just shot. We keep thanking her because, like Mike said, she is the first. Non-family friend. Neither of us know her. None of our family knows her. And yeah. she became a member, and she played the Wheel of Death. And yeah, it's a crazy thing to have a fan. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, there will be more. Hopefully, I, it, it I, won't I, just be Rachel as the fan. Yeah, I hope we get more. Yeah. I think we will. I I just will. slow, but I think it'll happen. Our goal, and I think it's a very obtainable goal, is we have, what, 221? Yeah. Starting season two. By the end of season two, let's get to 500. It would be nice. So it would help us out if you would like share the show, you know, say yeah. something on your social media, share yeah. us, so you can get some of your friends watching. Yeah. And maybe we'll give like the 500th person something. Ooh. Whoever makes the 500 mark, we'll think of something. We'll get a, we'll give them something. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. That's a good idea. We'll come up with something, a yeah. hat or something. Yeah, something. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Signed, signed by us. Signed or? by. Ooh, I like that even more. Yeah. We can put a ball print on there for Jack because, you know, he's, he's on the show with us. He's right. He's right down there. Right down dig, there in his corner. Digging his China. Digging his <laughs> dig himself to China. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, as long as we're in the middle of announcements, we have something to announce. Let's hear it. Oh! This is so commercialized, but I love it. This right here. Let's see if I can get a. Oh, there you go. 
this this real this looks like a professional like uh paper not pay per view. What's a home shopping network? Home right shopping here. network. Yeah, this is our two murder morons crime coffee. Yeah, medium roast. Because you know we all drink coffee. I love drinking coffee. I love it to death. Um, and so we're gonna start trying to do this. I thought, what better than you know people have a sip of our coffee while listening or watching our podcast? Yeah, watch our podcast, yeah. So we currently we've got three flavors, okay. strengths. Yep. Um, this is the silent killer medium roast. There's mm-hmm. also a light roast and a dark French roast. Yep, dark French is good. And they uh, are available on our website, twomurdermorons.com. If you want to give it a try, yeah, order some of our coffee. Have, you know, yeah. sip some while you're... Got to get a mug, too. Get, oh, it was get, yeah, get you a mug and a coffee. And and then you know what goes really good with a mug? What? A shirt and a hoodie. Oh, yeah, you're right. And then you can't, you got to have the hat. Yep, got to have the hat. Oh, God, we're so full of shit. Oh, Let's and look. a sticker, too. Oh, sticker. Gotta get a sticker, sticker. And some underwear. Computer. Oh, yeah. And underwear. a dog hoodie. Dog hoodie. What yeah. else is on there? Um, oh, AirPods case. AirPods case. Uh... <laughs> You got the the volleyball shorts or whatever they are for girls. Yeah, that I wore. Well, yeah, that you wore. I guess that was the underwear. Oh, you wore the underwear. Yeah. What, that, did, what show was that on? That that was on a bonus episode. That's so right. Yeah. Not to continue with the shameless plugs, but we do have a whole bunch of bonus episodes for our members on Buy Me a Coffee. So if, you go, if you go to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons, you can sign up to be a member there for as little as three bucks a month. You get bonus episodes. Yeah. Your, your name on the screen is a producer and certain levels, stuff like that. So you see any of or underwear. You can, that was one of our early it was. episodes. I surprised Mike because I was like, I came up with a new merch idea, kind of like how we just did the coffee, and I yeah, <laughs> stood up. pants down. <laughs> There's my face. They're basically like volleyball yeah. shorts. <laughs> yeah. I need to buy a pair still. I haven't got them yet. Do it. Yeah. I've, I've supported us enough already in shirts. <laughs> I <know>. Between my <laughs> kids and think, everything else. I think I've spent just for me about $300 on I had to buy a couple hoodies and shirts, you know, just to have stuff yeah, to yeah, wear when yeah, we're doing good, the show. Yeah. And I bought that one shirt, and I didn't even know I bought it. <laughs> that was the funny part. Aren't medications fun? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so for those of you that don't really know, and I really don't, I don't think it's ever been said. It but, hasn't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it has. But I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a messed up guy and on all kinds of medications and stuff. And I just, uh, I don't really want to go into the whole detail of it, but I just kind of got injured back in 21, so. Spinal cord injury and some other issues, and so yeah, I may s- sound quiet or I may fall asleep, and Andy's got to kick me. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> luck, ho- you know. Hopefully, I do a good job of editing, but <laughs> there are a few episodes uh, where, in the middle of recording, Mike has actually fallen asleep I have. and started snoring into his microphone, <laughs> and I had to go in and. Edit the volume level so that you couldn't hear this. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the bad part on those nights, I only live like a mile away, and I'm falling asleep as I pull into my neighborhood. That's sad. Hey, it really shouldn't be driving. I mean, spinal injury. Yeah, you're on some good. You're on some good shit. Oh, I am. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes, I am. And it's all legal. So the let's tell the can we tell can I tell the quick story yeah. real quick? Yeah. So a couple weeks ago, I'm on vacation in Tennessee. And I get an email that Mike has placed an order on our website for a T-shirt. It's the Everyone Needs a Mike T-shirt, if you haven't seen it. yeah. So I'm like, cool, and I'm on vacation. I'm not going to like call and be like, thanks for ordering another shirt, because we order stuff for ourselves all the time. So I'm like, cool, I approve it, I get it, you know, started or whatever. Well, then like about a week goes by, and I'm I'm back at home, and and, uh, I get a text from Mike that's like, hey, thanks for the shirt, man. (laughs) I'm like... I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I came home and I saw, you know, I had the shirt in this in this envelope and it's it's from Two Murder Morons. I appreciate you sending me the shirt. And I was like, Mike, you ordered that last week. He's like, shit, I did. <laughs> I, yes, Mike, you ordered yeah. it and paid for it with your <laughs> I thought it was I thought Andy was sending me that free gift. See, I'm smart now. I know that when you do that again. I'll be like, oh, I know, I'm a nice guy. You're very welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please do that. Yeah. <laughs> Until you check your credit don't card let me statement. That, don't let me know I'm an idiot. <laughs> be like that ass. Yeah, moron. Oh lord. Well, should we dive into Ed Gein? Let's get her did, done. Did get her done. Did let's get her done. Did I'm ready to get with this going, man. Let's get with this going. Let's do it. Got all these things we got. People probably think we're weird. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. Ed Gein. 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 What a weird name. All right. Well, we'll start off with his childhood. I guess like we do with most guys or ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get let's get a little yeah. little background on this dude going. Okay. Yeah. I, you know what? I'll do it today. 
You know, why don't you host? Yeah, I'll host. I mean, it's not, it doesn't look totally planned because you got the paper in front yeah, of you. Yeah. But you go. <laughs> yeah, I got my glasses on. Yeah, I know you're ready to go. No one's buying it. <laughs> All right, I'll try my best. Edward Theodore Gein was born in La Crosse, Wisconsin, on August 27th, 1906. God damn. That's a long time ago. The second of two boys of George Philip Gein. He was uh, born in 1873 and died in 1940. Right there at the start of World War II. And Augusta Will, Will, um, God, here we go. Will, 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 Okay, can I, I, I almost, when I was putting this episode together, I came across another one that was from South America, and it was, it was all those names, and no, I, no, no joke, I was like, I cannot, I know Mike's going to host this one, I cannot give him another one with all these names that are hard to pronounce. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's do Ed Gein, because that, that isn't, <laughs> is it going to be difficult? I'm not even a minute in, and I'm already I'm, having a problem. I'm sorry, man. Right. I, I tried. At least these I people have fucked up names sometimes. <laughs> it's all it boils down to. That's true. Why can't it be like Brown, you know, or something like that? Something easy. <laughs> Schaefer. These people that were born in the early 1900s, man, they got some names. Oh, the first names too. Yeah. Are weird sometimes. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, she obviously kept her last name or whatever, maybe, and added added a Gein in there too. Okay, now, actually, her, her maiden name was, oh, my God, <laughs> Lurk. Lurk? I don't know, L-E-H-R-K-E? Sure. Yeah, okay. Anyway, she was born in 1878 and died in 1945. Wow, she didn't live very long after her husband passed. No. Usually, they stick around for, like, 15 years. Yeah. Huh. Oh. all right. Dean had an, old, uh, had a, uh, an elder brother. Older brother named Henry. Um, Augusta, who was fer fervently religious and nominally Lutheran. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Second to Catholics there. Uh, frequently preached to her sons about the innate immorality of the world. Oh, man, that's deep. Um, the evil of drinking and her belief that all women were naturally promiscuous and instruments of the devil. Ain't she uh, true on that one? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right on point. <laughs> oh, here come the comments. comments. I'm just saying. I mean, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> I, I really didn't mean that, but it was, it's, it's just funny that she said it that way. <laughs> Instruments of the devil. Jesus, man. That is deep. Could you imagine your mom saying that to you? Right. And how old, how old are these kids at this yeah, point? They're exactly. young. Yeah. Yeah. What are they, like five? And you're like, women are like, the, yeah, this is what women are. <laughs> women are Satan. Jesus. All right. Anyway, God, that is deep. Man, okay. So she reserved time every afternoon to read to them from the Bible, usually selecting verses from the Old Testament and the book of Revelation concerning death, murder, and divine retribution. Gein idolized and became obsessed with her. Wow. <laughs> Those two sentences do not go together. So she's teaching her children about death, murder, and divine retribution, and that makes him become obsessed with his own mother. Yes. Well, because instruments of the devil. Obviously, he likes devilish things. Yeah, that he does. And Okay. Augusta hated her husband. He was an alcoholic who was unable to keep a job. He had worked at various times as a carpenter, a tanner. Uh, you know what a tanner is, don't you? Is that you were talking about like skins, yeah. like um, hides and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, and and he was also an insurance salesman. How do you go from being a tanner to an insurance? I know it's salesman? a weird mix of employment. There is what I'm thinking. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it was that early. It was that early years. Uh, during his time in Lacrosse, Gein's father owned a local grocery shop, but he soon sold the business and left the city with his family to live in isolation on a 155 acre, 63 hectare. For those of you that are into Hector's uh, farm in the town of Plainfield, Wisconsin, could you imagine 155 acres? I was just going to say that is the dream. Yeah, right I, there. I, right? I bought 11 acres, thinking it was great. Right, man, 155. I just he left the city to live in isolation on 155 yeah. acres. Like you, that is what I want to do. Yeah, that'd be the greatest life in the world. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. I bought 11 acres, I, and I feel like I'm secluded. I know. I feel like your property is huge. Yeah, it feels like it. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's see. 
Anyway, town of Plainfield, Wisconsin, which became their permanent residence. Uh, Augusta took uh, advantage of the farm's isolation by turning away outsiders who who could have influenced her sons. Oh, so she's really got them isolated, really, is the, yeah, mom, the thing. Yeah, yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Uh, Gein left the farm only to attend school. Outside of school, he spent most of his time doing chores on the farm, which, you know, back in those days, I mean, anybody that lives on farm life, that's, you know, that's you kind of chores, the norm. Chores in the morning and chores after school. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Gein was shy, and classmates and teachers remembered him as having strange mannerisms, such as seemingly random laughter, as if he were laughing at his own personal jokes. Does that make you? Does that remind you of somebody we know? <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, was that a fair imitation there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to see if we're on the same page. Um, to make matters worse, Augusta punished him whenever he tried to make friends. Jesus Christ! How dare you try to make friends with that neighbor boy? Yeah. What's up with that? I don't know. That's messed up. She's she wants the boys isolated yeah. from the world. But dude, she, man, she, she's. That's more, she was more, that's not, Lutheran's not that strict. Right. This is like extreme. Yeah. She's yeah. like, man. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, despite his poor social development, Gein did fairly well in school, particularly in reading. Well, that's good. Okay. All right. Well, he was good in school for the most part, just shy and laughed weirdly. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he sounds like. Yeah. I don't know. On April 1st, 1940, Gein's father died of a heart failure at the age of 66. Wow. He was young still. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Ed and, his Ed and his brother, Henry, began doing odd jobs around town to help cover living expenses. Well, that's good. Uh, which I'm surprised mom let him out to do anything. Right. Um, but since I guess they low on money. I had to do what they had to do. Uh, the brothers were generally considered reliable, honest, and by the rest, honest by the rest of the community. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So far, he's a pretty good kid. So far, so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than crazy mom. Yep. And his dad was, his dad was an alcoholic. Though. Yeah. Well, and dead at this point. And dead at this point. Yep. So, um, while both worked as handyman, uh, Ed also frequently babysat for neighbors. <laughs> well, so people trusted him with their kids. Yeah. That's good. Well, geez. Yeah. They're good, well behaved boys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure those people after down the road were like, holy cow. <laughs> well, like, we the dodged hell a bullet. What we thinking? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, he enjoyed ba uh, babysitting, seeming to relate more easily to children than adults. Immaturity issue going on a little yep, bit. Because mom's held him back. Right. He's a, he's a mama's boy, basically, yep. I would assume at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Henry began dating a divorced mother of two and planned to move in with her. He worried about his brother's attachment to their mother and often spoke ill of her around Ed, who responded with shock and hurt. Is this my life story, Mike? <laughs> yeah, in, in a way, yeah. See, there's a lot of stories that are your, your life story in a way. <laughs> Oh, no, what am I going to turn into later? In I, don't, life? I don't know. It's I'm kind of scared a little bit. Yeah, I know. You've had you've had some, uh, <laughs> but yeah. You know. mm. Oh, choices in life. Mm. Gotta love those choices in life. But one of them was a good choice. Yeah, he gave you. A, you got you got Louis. So that was, oh, was a good choice. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it yeah. just you know eventually sank, or tanked, whatever. Yeah, happens. Happens life okay on may 16th 1944 ed was burning away marsh vegetation on the property the fire got out of control drawing the attention of the local fire department by the end of the day the fire having been extinguished and the firefighters gone ed reported his brother oh reported his brother missing oh oh shit <laughs> so where's brother at i don't know this is gonna be with lanterns and flashlights, a search party searched for 43-year-old Henry, whose dead body was found lying face down. Ooh. Apparently, he had been dead for some time. And it appeared that the cause of death was heart failure, since he had not been burned or injured otherwise. Uh, okay, so he wasn't in the fire. They found him elsewhere dead. Yeah. 
and possibly died the same death as his dad. Interesting. Interesting. Because Henry's only 43. Yeah, that's that's really young. Yeah, it's like your age. No, Shit. not yet, but soon. Oh, close. Close. Almost. It's fucking sad. Why don't I have friends my age? <laughs> it's a it's a maturity level thing. I, I know. Well, at least you'll be able to carry my casket. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. Jesus. <laughs> Just saying. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it was later reported by biographer Harold Schechter, if I'm saying that right, uh, S-C-H-E-C-H-T-E-R, Schechter. Sure. Yeah. That Henry had bruises on his head. Police dismissed the possibility of foul play, and the co- county coroner later officially listed asphyxiation as the cause of death. Okay. Okay. Uh, the authorities accepted the accident theory, but no official investigation was conducted and an autopsy was not performed. Oh. Okay. Well, we're talking back in the day, too. True. Where, where the, it's just, they're kind of like, meh. <laughs> well, the coroner had a little more pullback then, too. If right. He didn't want to do it, if he didn't want to do it, they didn't do it. Yeah. So, I'm just thinking, like, lack of forensic technologies true. and testing yeah. and stuff. Yeah. They uh, Back then, it's just kind of like, yeah, yeah oh, he did. A pre, that's a heart attack, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. fixation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questioning, uh, question, I'm sorry, questioning Gein about the death of Bernice Warden in 1957, state investigator Joe, yeah, these are easy, Andy. Willimovsky. Uh, Willimovsky. Willimovsky. We'll go with it. Uh, brought up questions about Henry's death. Uh, George Arndt, A-R-N-D-T, Arndt. <laughs> You either are or you aren't. You are, yeah, right. Yep. You either are or you aren't. Uh, who studied the case wrote that, in re- retrospect, it was possible and likely that Henry's death was the Cain and Abel aspect of this case. Oh, so they didn't think his brother did it. Okay, so I'm not a very practiced religious person. Mm-hmm. What's the Cain and Abel? Brothers. But, uh, well, he kills his brother. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So they, they think that. Yeah. Eddie here killed brother. Yeah. Back then. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of along that line. Yeah. Moron. Yeah. Sorry. Well, we all are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not all of us, but you and I are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it yeah. says so. Name of the show. It says it on the internet. Yeah. yeah. It's on the internet. It's true. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, with Henry deceased, Ed and Augusta were now alone. Augusta had a paralyzing stroke shortly after Henry's death. This is mom, right? Yeah. Augusta's mom. Yep. Okay. And Ed, de- and Ed devoted himself to take of taking care of her. Yep. Because I mean, he was he liked his mom. A, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh sometime in nineteen forty five, he later recounted he and his mother visited a man named Smith, who lived nearby to purchase straw. Uh, according to Ed, Augusta witnessed Smith beating a dog. A woman inside uh, the Smith residence came outside and yelled for him to stop, but Smith beat the dog to death. Dang, okay. Wow. Okay. Weird. Uh, Augusta was extremely upset by this scene. However, what bothered her did not appear to be the brutality toward the dog, but rather the presence of the woman. Oh, uh, we got a little little jealousy going yep, on. Sounds like it. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sounds like her and Mr. Smith were uh, pretty good friends. <laughs> hmm. Bumping uglies. Bumping some uglies, yeah. Knocking some boots. Knocking some boots, yep. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Augusta told Ed that the woman was not married to Smith and so had no business being there and angrily called her Smith's harlot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just love the old-timey words. Yeah. You yeah. harlot. You harlot. <laughs> She's a harlot. <laughs> What's a harlot mean? You know? I mean, what, what? Oh, do you really not know? I know what it means. Oh, okay. I'm just saying, though. <laughs> it's know. like, oh my God. No, but it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, it cracks me up. We've gone from harlot to a lot more. Yes. Defensive words. <laughs> yes. Yes. We have, yes. Yes. Whew, man. All right. Uh, she, <laughs> she had a second stroke soon after. Well, yeah. She got all worked up. Um, and her health deteriorated, rap, uh, deteriorated rapidly. Augusta died on December 29, 1945, 
at the age of 67. Ed was devastated by her death. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it tore him apart. Oh, yeah. I mean, if he idolized her that much, I'm sure he this broke him. Yeah, this was his. This was the end of the world yeah, for him. Yeah, he snapped. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yep. this is where he snapped. Yep. Uh, Ed was devastated by her death. In the words of Schechter, who was that detective, uh, he had lost his only friend and one true love, and he was absolutely alone in the world. Yep, we see this a lot. Yes, we do. Serial killers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Gein held on to the farm and earned money from odd jobs. He boarded up rooms by by his mother. Uh, he boarded up rooms used by his mother, including the upstairs, uh, downstairs parlor, and living room, leaving them untouched. Oh wait! So he literally boards up half of the house. Yeah. So uh, I watched a. Uh, we were watching one of those. Uh, HGTV shows. Yeah. Okay. And this couple bought this house. And when they're re, you know, it was in, a, I think it was in, oh God, I forget what state it was in. But anyway, big old house. Yeah. And they were renovating it, did a lot of work. And they found, eventually, they found a bedroom that had been walled off. Okay. So, you know, I thought that kind of weird. And I was kind of looking into it. I guess a lot of people back then, would board up when their child died, so they didn't have to look at that room anymore. They would board up that room. Uh, okay, so it's kind of a common thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, so, you know, they don't want to keep walking by that bedroom every time and be like, oh, shit. Right, yeah, have so, the memories come back. So and, they put a wall and yeah. just blocked off the whole room. Yeah. This is crazy. And, well, and, and it's funny, what's funny about it, the people that bought the house, they had the, saw this window, and they're like, where the hell is that window at? And they go upstairs, right. they can't find it. You know? Yeah. And finally, that's how they found the room. Interesting. Yeah. But he. this wasn't just her room. It no. was the whole upstairs yes. and then the downstairs living room and downstairs parlor. Yeah. So, like, more than half the house is mm. boarded off. Yeah, because he can't stand the memory. Yeah. Crazy. Yep. Crazy. Well, the rest of the house became increasingly squalid. These rooms remained past, uh, pristine. So, I mean, should you buy this house down the road, it's going to be a nice house. Yeah. Might be a little dusty, but... Well, yeah, but you know, it's 155 acres, we expect. Yeah. Uh, Gein lived uh, thereafter in a small room next to the kitchen. <clears throat> Around this time, he became interested in reading pulp magazines and adventure stories, particularly those involving cannibals or Nazi atrocities. Oh, dang. Specifically concerning, uh, concerning Ilsh Koch, who selected tattooed prisoners for death in order to fashion lampshades and other items from their skins. Hmm? Dude, the, you know, those Nazi guys, man, they were sick. Yeah. But who? But what does this remind you of? Remember in the intro, like Ed here, ha, he's the inspiration between a lot of famous Hollywood oh, movies. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So Some that we've uh, made fun of. Yeah. Yeah, like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Things like that. And that's, uh, uh, what's his name? Buffalo Bill. Yeah. It puts the lotion on its skin because that's what he was doing was mm-hmm. removing the skin. Mm-hmm. And then what's another uh, – with this whole mother thing, what movie would that be that's, that would be based off of this idea where the killer is obsessed with mother? Oh, shit. Mother! The psycho. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And maybe a little uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah, thrown yeah. in there yeah, a little bit. There, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Wow. Just interesting that all those stories yeah, are it. kind of loosely based off this. Mm-hmm. So it's it's crazy to me when I'm going to watch those movies again that I'll be thinking, this isn't just completely fictional. This is – there is a, a guy that was into this stuff for real that this is based off of. Yeah. Like that, that's creepy. It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but, yeah, we know there's that out there. Yeah. Um. Gein received a farm subsidy from the federal government starting in 1951. That's good. Uh, He occasionally worked for the local municipal road crew and crop threshing crews in in the Plainfield area. Sometime between 1946 and 56, he also sold an 80-acre, 32-hectare parcel of land that Henry had owned. Selling off brother's land. Yeah. Well, he probably needed the money. Yeah. I'm sure it was. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, he's not making wasn't making a whole lot of money. Right. And that's a lot of upkeep. Yeah. I, I mean, if the federal government's get subsidizing your farm, you got to follow their rules. 
Yeah. You got to plant what they tell you to plant, when to plant, when not to plant. Right. All that crazy shit. What fertilizer to use, yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah. It's just, yeah. Hmm. Okay, so this let's just move on. It's gonna get really we're get we're get we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting to the point where it gets uh yeah, becomes different. <laughs> Cause up to this point, he doesn't sound like a bad other than the fact that, you know, he has mom issues. Yeah. He's really not a bad guy. And he's starting to get into this weird yeah reading stuff. Yeah, that's because he's alone now and he's going to his fantasy place. Well, he never had a he never had a childhood. True right. I mean, he didn't really have a life, period, really. Didn't have friends. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a n- old new experience for him. Yeah, and he is on his own now. Yes. Yep. Nobody to yell at him and tell him that women are the devil and whatever. Okay. On the morning of uh, November 16th, 1957, 58-year-old Plainfield Hardware store owner Bernice Warden disappeared. Gone. Gone. Disappeared. Yep, because, you know, he's just... Like that. It's on. Poof. Poof. Yep. Uh, the hardware store's truck was seen driving out from the rear of the building at around 9.30 a.m. The hardware store saw a few customers the entire day. Some area residents uh, believe that this was because of her uh, deer season. <laughs> deer season. Oh. <laughs> so no one's in town. Yeah, no one's in town. Yeah, let's just close up shop early because I'm going to go deer hunting. Right. Yeah. Well, you got to get it in because you only got a small window. Yeah. All right. Okay. It was deer season. Uh, Warden's son, uh, Deputy Sheriff Frank Warden. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. So her son's a <laughs> sheriff's deputy? Sheriff's deputy. Ooh. Uh, he entered the store around 5 p.m. to find the cash register open and blood stains on the floor. Oh, man. How much would that suck? You're going to visit mom at her job. Yeah. And you walk in and you see this scene. Yeah. Oof. And you're a cop. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and you definitely know she didn't go deer, deer hunt at this point. Right. Yeah. That's off the marks. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Frank Warden told investigators that he, uh, that on that evening before his mother's disappearance, Gein had been in the store and was to have returned the next morning for a gallon of antifreeze. A sales slip from the antifreeze was the last receipt written by Warden on the morning that she disappeared. Okay. Can we talk? Uh- Dumb criminals. We talk about dumb criminals all the time. Oh, yeah. So you go to the store, and your intent is to murder this woman or kidnap. Mm. We, I guess oh, we don't yeah, know if it's murdered or Yeah, yet, whatever. But, but you let her sit there and write out the last receipt of the day with your damn name on it before mm. you do it. Yeah. Like, come on, people. Like, I'm not trying to make criminals better, but really? This, yeah. This is what we're working with here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. It just seemed like you're going to sit there and let her write your name on something, and then you're going to whack her. And oh yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah, you, know, you, you people that steal credit cards, debit cards. You know, same same thing. Just idiots. <laughs> just I mean, they're idiots. Caught, well, they're caught on camera for one. Well, there he is. He's on camera, right? Using that card at this time. <laughs> right. Kind of hard to fight that one. To buy the hacksaw and trash bag. Yeah, yeah. That's what he bought. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, there you go. <sighs> Jeez. Yeah. Uh, that evening, uh, Gein was arrested at a West at a West Plainfield grocery store, and the Washura County Sheriff's Department searched the Gein farm. Okay. Okay. So now Gein's a suspect. They think he's taken old Mrs. Warden. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, a sheriff's deputy discovered Warden's decapitated body in a shed on Gein's property. Oh, my goodness. Nah, let's just leave a receipt with your name on it. And then I'm going to kill her on my property and leave her body on my property. Yeah, and a shed on my property. Hmm. Well, okay. Uh, we're poking fun, right? But, yeah. I mean, he's this is a messed up guy. It is. I mean, I'm not making excuses for this. I'm just saying he, he's not all right in the head. Correct. So I can't give him too much crap for being an idiot about committing this crime. Yeah, because his mom fuck, basically screwed his life up. Yeah. So, yeah. And now, unfortunately, he went this route. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, uh, she was hung upside down by her legs with a crossbar at her ankles and ropes at her wrists, on her wrists. The torso was dressed out like a deer. She had been shot with a twenty two caliber rifle, and the, uh, the mutilations were made after her death. Searching the house, authorities found whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of human skin, Human skin covering several chairs, 
and skulls on his bedposts. Holy shit. <laughs> this is... Oh, I'm not done. Oh, oh okay. We oh, got more? Yeah, let's, let's go on. <laughs> this is straight oh, up Buffalo yeah, Bill. Let's, yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, here we go. It's like a freaking... Ugh. It's a laundry list of items oh, here. Oh, shit, man. God. And, I mean, this is in a small time. Time frame. Right. <laughs> it's like we went from he's reading books about this stuff. Yeah. To what, waste baskets and couches made out of human flesh? Exactly. I mean, it's, it's just like, like yesterday, I was this. <laughs> Today, I'm this. <laughs> Let's, I got to hear what else is oh on my this God. list. Yeah, female skulls with uh, the top sawn off. Bowls made from uh, human skulls, a corset made from a female torso, skin from shoulders to waist. Why the hell would he want a corset? Oh, God. Jesus. Holy cow. Mm. Leggings made from a human leg. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't eat. This is so, like, uncomfortable. Masks. Masks made from the skin of female heads. Mary Hogan's face mask in a paper bag. Okay, so they found now this we're talking about the lady at the grocery store, right? So they Yeah, they the ones found hanging, the ones hanging up in the barn. Decapitated. Yes. Now they found her face yes. in a bag. In a bag. Yeah. Paper bag. Ugh. Yeah. Uh they found no, this no, that was Warden. This is Hogan. Oh. Yeah, there's somebody different. Oh, dang. I don't know where she came from. Oh, okay, dang. Okay, Mary Hogan, Hogan's uh, skull in a box. Now, Bernice Warden's entire head was in a burlap sack. She was the one that's out in the shed. Good Lord. Uh, they also found her heart in a plastic bag in front of Gein's potbelly stove. <laughs> what? Oh. Nine vulva in a shoe box. <laughs> Jesus. A young girl's dress and the vulvas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old. Oh, my God. Um, when you get to kids, man, I get so pissed. Yeah. Um, a belt made from female human nipples, four noses, a pair of lips on a window shade drawstring, and a, lamp sh a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, fingernails from f uh, female victims, or, or well, their fingers. The fingernails from the their fingers. Um, a, a female human nipple doorbell. Like he literally, his doorbell is someone's nipple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nipple. Good. Not like a nipple on a bottle. We're talking about <laughs> like, okay. uh, yeah, somebody's nipple. Yeah. This, I did not know all this. Jeez. I totally see now why Buffalo Bill and Silence of the Lambs is, I mean, this, this is, he's Buffalo Bill. Yeah. He's idol. This, I, this is why, this is his idol. This is Buffalo Bill's idol. Good Lord. Yeah. These artifacts were f uh, photographed at the state crime laboratory and then decently disposed of. Did you say indecently? No, oh, decently. Oh, decently. It's like indecently. Why would they say that? Okay. Okay. It's not decently it's, supposed. Hey, look, it's not like sock and rock. rock. <laughs> you know now I'm going to put a picture of a sock and, and a rock. rock. I know. On I, the screen, I, I, I have to. Okay, that's fine. It, but it just reminds me of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to find an image of a human nipple on a doorbell unless I Photoshop it, and that's way too sick, and I'm not going to do it. I'm sure it's out there. Uh, I'm not even going to look. I'm I not even going to Google that because I don't want that in my search history. No. No. They're already going to look at us if a murder happens around here because they'll be like, check the two idiots yeah, that make the stupid podcast. Yeah. They, okay. they seem obsessed with this stuff. Yeah. That's not going to my Google search. No, no, not mine. Oh, hell. Maybe I'll have my, uh, I'll have one of my son's friends look it up for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go on anyway. So, uh, when questioned, Gein told investigators that between 1947 and 1952, he made, he made as many as 40 nocturnal visits to three local graveyards to exhume human, or exhume, ex, oh, Jesus, just hit me in the head. <laughs> exhume recently buried bodies while he was in a daze like state. Daze like state. But he remembers it to tell them that he did it. Yeah. Well, what kind of days out? I mean, what, like, was he on high on drugs? 
Here's what I don't understand is people that use the excuse that I was in a dazed state, but they remember it now clearly to be able to tell you, yeah, I did this. But I didn't know I was doing it back then. I didn't know I was doing it at the time, but I remember doing it and I can tell you that I did it. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No sense at all. Yeah. Yeah. So 40 visits to graveyards where he dug up bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, So, yeah. Okay. On about 30 of those visits, he said that he came out of the days of while in the cemetery, left the grave in a good order, and returned home empty-handed. Oh, okay. So if he woke up, realized he was in the there, he, he would clean up he, and go home. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything like, oh, wrong. Right, oh, shit, go. what am I doing here? But on his day state, <laughs> right. he doesn't. I guess he becomes aware of it when he's home. I, oh, shit. Where did I, where I, I get this nipple at? We're right. Yeah. I mean, is it like that? Oh, I didn't know I had a human nipple on my front door. Oh, my God. This is terrifying. Yeah. Mm, I would I was like the, the court. On, I would have been in the, I would have sat in the court on this one. Uh, on other occasions, he dug up the graves of recently buried middle-aged women he thought resembled his mother and took the bodies home where he tanned their skins to make his paraphernalia. Oh, dude, this is straight up psycho. Yes. This is Norman Bates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just going on down the list. God, Mm -hmm. it's that obsession with mom. So he's literally digging up women that he knows look like his mom. mom. Yeah, craziness. So he can idolize them forever. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Dean admitted to stealing from nine graves and led investigators to the locations. Uh, Alan Wilmowski of the State Crime Laboratory participated in opening. Uh, three test graves identified by Gein. The caskets were inside uh, wooden boxes. The top boards ran crossways, not lengthwise. The tops of the boxes were about two feet, 61 centimeters below the surface in, sa- in a sandy soil. Gein had robbed the graves soon after the funerals while the, author- or while the graves were not completed. Because, you know, usually they're not. Sometimes they're not ready to like the next day or whatever. whatever. Right, because yeah. they don't like fill them all the way in. They just kind of with yeah. that first layer. Yeah. So he wasn't really having to dig very far. He no. was scoping it out and... Yeah, he, he probably was a funeral. Oh, God. Um, okay. Uh, the test graves were doomed because authorities were uncertain as to whether the, the slight gene was capable of a single-handedly digging up a grave during a single evening. They were found as... They were found, as Gein described, one casket was empty. Another casket contained Gein's crowbar. Oh, well, that's pretty damning yep. evidence. Yep. And the final casket saw most of the body missing, yet Gein had returned rings and some body parts. So he's returning body parts to the grave, too? And in the, in the, in the jewelry. Good Lord, man. Mm. Thus, Gein's, thus, Gein's confession was larger, largely corroborated. Yeah, I would say if you lead them and say it was this grave, this grave, and this yeah. grave, and they dig, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is missing, or parts missing. Well, if you say, dig these three, this one's going to be empty. Right. And this one's got fingers and rings. Right. Pretty much tells you. Yeah. yeah. He, he's done. Yeah. He's done for. Uh, soon after his mother's death, Dean began to create a woman's suit. God, I don't... Oh, it does goes on. So that he could become, so that he'd become his mother. So he was literally trying to become his mother. That's Mm. how much he cared for her. Yes. To literally crawl into her skin. Oh, my God. He denied having sex with with the bodies he exhumed, explaining they smelled too bad. During state. So, hang on. Pump the brakes. Okay. So... (laughs) I, I, is that I, I'm on the same page, but yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking that insinuates he thought about it. Oh yeah, he considered it. He considered it, but was like, Ugh, Ugh, God, this, smell. This is a, a bit much. Yeah, but yeah, he could take their other parts of their bodies still and still do stuff with it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, so skinning them and cutting off nipples and cutting off their head and making yeah. stuff out of their body part like that wasn't disgusting, but the smell, it smells pretty bad. Yeah, usually. I mean, it's meat. Right. 
Oh, geez. Okay. During state crime laboratory interrogation, Gein also admitted to shooting 51-year-old, here's Mary, Ho- Mary Hogan, a tavern owner missing since December 8, 1954. Okay. Whose head was found in his house, but he later denied memory of details of her death. Here we go. He's probably just days like state again. So he admitted to shooting her. Yeah. But he, he that's all he remembered. He, I just know I shot her. I yeah. Can't, I can't give you details. Yeah. I don't remember anything else, but I did shoot her. Oh, then I went to a daze like state. <laughs> mm. um, a 16 year old youth whose parents were friends of Gein and who attended baseball games and movies with him reported that Gein kept shrunken heads in his house, which she had described as relics sent by a cousin who had served in the Philippines during World War II. And, and that could be true. I mean, that's a truth because that, that did kind of happen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. A lot of weird things from that happened in World War II. Upon investigation by police, these were determined to be human facial skins, carefully peeled from corpses, and used by Gein as masks. So not heads from the Philippines, literally. Literally, yeah. People he dug up. <clears throat> dug up, probably. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe he killed them and then just used their face. Yeah. I don't mm. mm-hmm. Yeah. During questioning, Sheriff Art Shaley uh, res- reportedly assaulted Reportedly assaulted Gein by banging his head and face into a brick wall. Now that's police work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so a little, so a little coercion tactic during yeah, the interrogation. Just a little, let you know that. Just, just to let you know, you know, hey, you're in custody. Uh, right. Yeah. Just no cameras then. Just letting you know what's up. Yeah, because there's no cameras in your brother. Right. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's police work. <laughs> well, it was back then. As a result, Gein's initial confession was ruled inadmissible. Oh, damn it. That's where they fucked up. <sighs> yep. Because it was coerced. Coerced, because they banged his head into a wall. Yeah. Yep. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, Shaley died of a heart attack failure in 1968 at the age of 43. Damn. Dang. So this is the sheriff. Yeah. Before Gein's trial. Many who knew Shaley said he was traumatized by the horror of Gein's crimes, and this, along with uh, the fear of having to testify, especially about assaulting Gein, called his death. Oh, they're saying he was stressed out about having to— Because what he did. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in addition to, to the murders of Hogan and Warden, Gein was also considered a suspect in several other unsolved cases in Wisconsin. I would think so. I mean, he's got enough body parts yeah. and skins in his house. It's more than just two people. And and a few bodies from yeah. the graveyard. Yeah, yeah. I'd be looking at a lot of missing person cases. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, in November 1957, authorities confronted Gein with a list of missing persons. <laughs> cases that uh, had occurred between the death of his mother and warden. Uh, Their suspicions were further aroused after the discovery of Hogan's remains. However, a lie detector test seemingly exonerated Gein of any any other murder, and his psychiatrist concluded that his violence was only directed to women who physically resembled his mother. Okay, so he passed some lie detector tests on those missing persons. But yeah, but he had some youth stuff, so did those young youth look like his mother? Yeah, that I don't understand, unless he had... Pictures of his mother when she was younger? Could be. I don't know. I don't know. Man, it's awful windy out there. <laughs> oh, you hear that wind hitting the window? Man, that wind is howling. Howling. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> hmm. Okay. George Jean Weckler, uh, age eight, disappeared near her farm home in Fort Atkinson at approximately 3.30 p.m. on May 1, 1947. She was given a lift home from grade school in Jefferson by a neighbor who dropped Weckler off at the lane that led from U.S. Highway 12 to the Weckler farm. Uh, Weckler was last seen pausing to open the family mailbox and removing a stack of mail. She, She was never seen again. Witnesses reported seeing a dark colored, possibly black, 1936 Ford sedan with a gray plastic spotlight in the vicinity that afternoon. And guess what? Gein owned a vehicle matching that description. So here he's an eight-year-old. Yes. 
Now we're into kids. I hate the kids stuff, man. Yeah. Mm. I hate it. How does the eight year old remind you of your mom? Exactly. It's yeah. It makes no sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Evelyn Grace Hartley, age fifteen. Uh, she went missing while babysitting a twenty month old girl at the home of a, of a lacrosse state college professor, uh, Vigo Rasmussen, on the evening of October twenty fourth, nineteen fifty three. In the lacrosse. That evening, her father, Richard, called the Rasmussen house several times after she failed to check in as planned at 8.30 p.m. He received no answer. Concerned, he drove to the Rasmussen house to find the doors were locked. The uh, lights and radio and items uh, scattered all over the house. Mm. The living room furniture had been moved around to different places, um, as were Evelyn's school books. Richard found her shoes in different rooms, one shoe upstairs, one down. Uh, He also found uh, his daughter's broken glasses upstairs. Richard did not find Evelyn in the house. After his arrest, Gein was questioned regarding Evelyn's disappearance. However, he denied involvement in the disappearance and passed two lie detector tests. Uh Police Uh found no trace of Evelyn's remains during a search of Gein's property. Now... Uh, lie, detector lie detector tests, tests are not 100 percent effective. That's why they don't. You can't use them in court, right? So, yeah, maybe he he worked it up to where he could, he know how to pass these things. Could be. I mean, some guys were able to do that. Yeah. Uh, Victor Harold Travis, age 43, a resident of Adams County, went off to hunt deer in the company of 43 year old acquaintance Raymond Burgess, a resident of Milwaukee. On November 1st, 1952, in the late afternoon, the pair stopped for refreshments at Max Bar in Plainfield for several hours. Because that's what you do when you go to your hunting. Usually most guys would. Why didn't they just say stop and get beer? I don't know. Stopped for refreshments. Why didn't they just say they didn't go deer hunting? They actually went to Max Bar right. for refreshments. <laughs> uh, Baby, did you catch any deer out there? Oh, no. Well, it was a, a slow day, honey. No, no, no we, biting. We spent all day out there in that tree uh, staying nothing. Nothing. Well, how come your breath smells like Budweiser? Well, we took a 12-pack up there with us, honey. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at around 7 p.m., they both left the bar, got into Burgess' car, and drove away. The hunters, along with the car Burgess was driving, were never seen again, and no trace of them was ever found. Uh, Travis and Burgess had been hunting on the farm next to Gein's despite objections on the day of their disappearance. Okay, so they're hunting right next to his property, and he apparently had said something to them Mm -hmm. and didn't want them hunting. Correct. The same day they disappeared. Correct. Yep, they're dead. Uh, They're dead. Yep. Uh, In addition, Gein Gein has been uh, attentively linked to the June 1954 disappearance of neighbor James Walsh, age 32, Walsh and his wife lived near Gein, who performed chores for her after her husband went missing. So her husband goes missing, and he goes over there and helps her out with chores. He's over there. You need. I know your husband. Can't, yeah. No one can find your husband. You need help fixing this. Yeah. Mm. Gein was also investigated for potential involvement in the August 1956 disappearance of I- Irene Keating, age 30, who was last seen in Plainfield and in the attempted ad- uh, abduction of Jody Rodin Rod- Rod- Call, A-16, from Auroraville. Hmm. Yeah. So, he's probably not going to admit to a lot of this. Oh, no. Well, he's he's in a he's in a daze, Mike. Yeah. I know I did it. Yeah. I just can't tell you how or when or where. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I get, I, you know, I get into a daze-like state. <laughs> Well, yeah, medic- medication sometimes does it to you. Right. Yeah. But I at least remember what I've done for the day, for the most part. He is really digging back yeah, he's, here. He's into it. I'm going to have to rename him Ed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's he burying? Whose bones are he burying? What's Jesus. he digging up? Mm. Moving on. Moving on to November <laughs> my birthday, 1957. Like the exact date? Yeah. November was my birthday. 11. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought 1957. And I love that you just gave your birthday out. Edit. 
Mm. Edit. Do you want to you want to give your um, while we're at it? You want to give your social security number? Uh, and, uh, edit. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I know. 1957, Gein was arraigned on one count of first degree murder in Washura County Court, where he pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Now, here we go. Here's the days like state. I'm insane. Yeah, whatever. Was, yeah. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Because that way you can go to some insane society and get out in five years. Yeah, sit on a couch, watch cable. Yeah. Well, well you didn't have cable back then. But yeah. you could at least watch, like, Woody Woodpecker or something. Right. Yeah. Um, he was diagnosed with schizophrenia and found mentally incompetent, thus unfit for trial. Of course. Yeah, of course he well, was. I, I can see the, I can see it. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think obviously he's got some issues, right? Uh, like bipolar or something, <laughs> right. you know. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he was sent to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. Uh, now the Dodge Correctional Institution, a maximum security facility in uh, Wapoon. It's it's funny how they have these names. You would, it's America, and they have these, you know. It's just, I don't know, this is weird. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> like, this is America. And later, <laughs> transferred to the Mendota uh, State Hospital in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. In 1968, doctors determined Gein was mentally able to confer with counsel and participate in his defense. Oh, they reversed it. it. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's good. Uh, so, <laughs> too bad for him. Uh, the trial began on November 7th, 1968, lasted one week. The psychiatrist testified that Gein had told him that he did not know whether he, the killing of Warden was intentional or accidental. I don't know. I don't know. Accidental. I, but you, you cut her up and stuff. I, I mean, I could get it. If you kill, shot somebody accidentally, I get that. Right. But then you go in and you cut them up and hang them like a deer. And what, where's the accident at that point? Wear their face as a mask. Yeah. And what part of that became the, as an accident? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Man. Mm. Uh, Gina told him that while he examined a gun in Warden's store, the, the weapon discharged and killed Warden. Okay. 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 So far. So far. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, it, it could happen. Uh, he said he had not aimed the rifle at Warden and did not remember anything else that happened that morning. How convenient. convenient. Yep. Dave State kicked in. Mm. I guess if he would have had medication, he would have been all right. Maybe. Oh, man. Oh, poor lady. Um, at the request of, the, of his defense, Gein's trial was with, held without a jury. Hmm. Well, they're going, they're, they're laying it in the hands of the judge. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's good. I guess. Well, I probably smart on their part because yeah, uh, true. The jury would have been like, this oh, crazy yeah, ass yeah, needs yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty of first degree. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, weird. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, without a jury, with uh, Judge Robert H. Gallmer presiding, uh, Gein was found guilty by Gallmer on November 14th. A second trial dealt with Gein's sanity. Uh, after testimony by doctors for the prosecution and defense, Gallmer ruled Gein not guilty by reason of insanity. So, they reversed it. There we are again. Yeah, now, now he's back, back to insanity. He's yeah. insane. <sighs> Jesus. Okay. Um, and ordered him committed to the Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. Gein spent the rest of his life in a mental hospital. Judge Gullimer wrote, due to prohibitive costs, Gein was tried for only one murder, that of Mrs. Warden. He also admitted to killing Mary Hogan. So that's all he That's all he was found guilty of was... Yeah, no, no grave, nothing to do with graves. Nothing, just the one murder. Just the, yeah, one, well, yeah, one murder. Okay, but he got life in a in a in, in a mental health facility, right. which you know they could let him go. I mean, they do it all the time. Yeah, uh, the fate of, so Gein's house and uh, uh, one hundred ninety five acres, seventy nine hectares, uh, were appraised at holy cow forty seven hundred dollars. <laughs> forty seven hundred. 
which is equivalent to 50,000 in 2023. That's it for all those acres and everything? I get if, like, the house is a shithole, but the acreage alone, you would think, even without a house on it, would be... You would think maybe there's some issues with it. Maybe the, well, I mean, look at it. It's yeah, it's all boarded up, and I'm sure, you know. But still, the, just acreage alone. Yeah. I'd take that house, and I'd revamp re- 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 it. Oh, no, I'd, uh, I'd burn it. I'd burn it. Yeah, that house. I'd burn that house and, and build down the road the way. Yeah, I was going to say that. This house has got some. Yeah, go. I'd, I'd burn that house. Yeah, just like I want to burn that one on my property. Yeah. Okay, we should have, it's like, I, I don't even, I'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, his possessions were uh, scheduled to be Auctioned on March 30th, 1958. 1958. What did I say? Uh, you said 958. Yeah, I it's like, damn, that's way back there. <laughs> you Egyptians? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. <laughs> 1958. 1958. Admissed, admissed rumors that the house and land it stood on might become a tourist attraction. Oh, I definitely think it would have. I think it would be. Yeah. yeah. Early on the morning of March. <laughs> so aggressive. So aggressive. Uh, 20th, the house was destroyed by fire. Huh. Huh. Convenient. Well, hmm. Act of God? I wonder how that... Hmm. <laughs> Act of God? I don't know. <laughs> a deputy fire marshal reported that a garbage fire had been set 75 feet, 23 meters from the house by a cleaning crew who was given the task of disposing of refuse. Okay, I believe that part. Okay. The hot coals were recovered from the spot of the bomb fire, but that the fire did not spread along the ground from that location to the house. Okay. Arson was suspected. Yeah, I would think. Yep. But the cause of the fire was never officially determined. It is possible that the fire was considered a matter of urgency by uh, Chief Frank Warden, uh, Fire Chief Frank Warden, son of Gein's victim, Bernice Warden, Wait, hang on, hang on a second. So that woman in the grocery store, one son is a deputy sheriff, the other one is the fire chief. I think he was. I think this is the same guy. Oh, you think it's the same guy? Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I think it's Frank. We'll have to go back and look. But I think okay. I think he went from a deputy to a fireman. Or he's both. It's a it could small be both. town. Well, I he mean, could be both. Yeah, he could be both. Or he maybe he just realized that being a fireman was you know, the best part time job <laughs> in the world. <laughs> And didn't have to do as much as he had to do as a cop. Here comes the fireman comments. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, they play Xbox and cops. You know, they can't do that stuff. But yeah. okay, in short, though, what they they think the fire is not considered a matter of priority. Well, yeah, the how you're the fire chief. Yeah, and the house of the dude who killed your mother is on fire. Yeah, who cares? I'm probably stopping to tie my shoes before I get yeah, there too. Yeah, probably gonna stop at the. Gas station on the way to get a cup of coffee. Get a coffee. Get yeah. Get some snacks. Yeah, get some snacks, and then just drive there and watch it for a while, and then you know, spray on it and move like, on. Where is that hose that Where's I that? need? Oh man, I think we forgot the key to open up the fire hydrant. Oh shit! Oh, darn it! So let it burn. Oh man! Oops. We'll, we'll make sure it doesn't go out anywhere past the spot. Uh, okay. What was I? We uh, when Dean. Learned of the incident while in detention, he shrugged and said, just as well. Just as well. <laughs> so they go to him and they're like, your house hey, your is house burned down. down. Yeah, just, just as well. As well. Yeah. Dean's four sedan, which he used to haul the bodies of his victims, was sold at public auction for $760. Somebody bought that thing? Oh, yeah. Equivalent to 8000 in 2023 to Carnival Sideshow Operator. Bunny Gibbons. Uh, it all makes sense now. It's going to go on tour. Yep. Gibbons yeah. charged Carnival Goers 25 cents a mission to see it. Yeah. He probably made, a, probably made a million bucks. He probably made some money. Yep. Uh, Gein died at the Medota Mental Health Institute due to respiratory failure, secondary to lung cancer, on July 26, 1984, at the age of 77. Okay. So he died at uh, he had a longer life than most. Over the years, uh, souvenir seekers chipped pieces from his gravestone at the Plainfield Cemetery uh, until the stone itself was stolen in 2000. It was recovered in 2001 near Seattle, Washington, and was uh, placed in storage at the Washara County Sheriff's Department. 
the grave site itself is now marked, but not unknown. But unknown. But not unknown. Ian is interred between his parents' and brother in the cemetery. Sorry. And that is the life of Ed Gein. Man, fascinating individual, right? Very fascinating. And you know, and we and we laughed a lot in that. And, and you know, it's sometimes you have to laugh at this stuff. We're not laughing at the victims. It's just right. Just this kind of stuff. You got. I don't know. You just uh, we 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 take it. We well, we have a different. We have a different aspect to look on stuff. Well, it's kind of you know. You often hear people complain when they watch the news, right? You'll be watching the news and they'll be talking about some quadruple homicide and they're showing B-roll footage from the scene and and you see all the cops and detectives standing on the front lawn and they're all laughing. Hands in their pockets. Guys, one of them smoking a cigarette trying to hide it. Right, and they're they're telling jokes and they're laughing. Yeah. I I think what a lot of people don't realize is that's a way to relieve the stress of having to deal Deal with with all this stuff. See these people in that house, all the shit they saw. Right. You know, nipple on the freaking doorbell. To people's faces on, you know, it just, yeah. Yeah, it's Bye. intense. It's intense. And if the way to make yourself mentally healthy after seeing something like that is to laugh a little bit, so be it. Yep. Yeah. Sick, and, sick, sick individual. Sick stuff. You know what time it is? Time is Wheel of Death. Wheel of Death. Ah! Woohoo! <laughs> Wonderful. Well, they'll probably pick you. Never know. Why would they pick me? I don't know. Because the last one picked me. Oh, you think they're alternating? Might be. All right, let's get our bucket of doom. Okay. Here is our bucket of doom. Uh, real quick PSA. If you would like to be considered to play the Wheel of Death and get your name in the bucket, in the bucket, go to twomurdermorons.com slash wheel of death, or just go to our homepage. You'll see the little sign-up form. Sign up there. We'll add your info in the bucket, and you could be drawn to play the Wheel of Death. Yeah. All right, so who we got today, Mike? Draw a name. Oh. Noah Wood from Flint, Michigan. Noah Wood. Is that what he said? Wood? Noah Wood. Last name's Wood. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we'll get Noah on the line, and uh, we'll play the Wheel of Death. Okay. Sounds good. All right, everybody. We have Noah with us here on the show. Noah, welcome, man. Hey, good. Hey, Noah. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Hey, doing great. Doing good. Where are you calling from today? I'm from Michigan, man. Michigan. Nice. Man. What part of Michigan? <laughs> up? Are you upper uh, part, lower part? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm around Flint, but not Flint because nobody wants to be associated with Flint. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Water, yeah, how's the water, water issues there? and yeah, all that kind of stuff. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> well, welcome, man. Congratulations on uh, your name being drawn to play the Wheel of Death. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. Right, this so- right here is our wheel. Um, your options here, obviously, there's a couple of spaces that say death, in which case you don't get shit. Um, but if you land anywhere else, we'd have hats, hoodies, shirts, gift cards for our merch. We have free memberships, so you'd get all the bonus episodes. Basically, whatever you land on, you win. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. So you get to pick. Do you want uh, myself or Mike to spin the wheel for you? Well, who has the best track record going? Oh, here we go. Honestly, I think we're about even right now. I think right? we are, because I've improved this year. I've been practicing, though. Yeah. Mike had a rough start, like, seven or eight deaths in a row, which is insane because this wheel, there's only four spots out of what, 20 that. Yeah. Are, yeah. And he just kept hitting it over and over, but he's come out of that. I think the past. Yeah. The, the girl, the, we had a, we had a lady play last week and she got the $50 gift card. Yeah. And he spun. That's so his, okay. Okay. his luck is good right now. I think, I think we ride the hot hand, uh, Mike, let's, uh, let's have you spin it. All right. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Right, Mike, we spin go. the wheel. <laughs> Ah, oh, you okay? So you've got yourself a free buy me a coffee membership, our Grump Fish level. Um, so that's like our mid level. You'll get your name on our website as a producer, and you also have access to all our bonus episodes for a year. Right on, right on. Awesome, Noah. Well, thank you very much for being a fan, and thank you very much for calling in and playing the Wheel of Death. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, hey, thanks, bud. Appreciate See, it. See you, bud. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Noah, again on uh, your free buy me a coffee membership yeah. which oh i'm sorry go ahead i didn't want to interrupt you i'm i'm i'm, I'm two, two two oh yeah two. your luck is improving it is you are so two hey two. hey out there uh, those of you that had doubts in me i'm coming back mike is on fire fire fire, fire. 
That was a scary face you just made right there. Yeah. Well, what Noah just won was a free Buy Me a Coffee membership. Yep. Which, let's talk about Buy Me a Coffee really quick. Yes. You enjoyed this episode and want to see some bonus episodes. And bonus episodes are good. Yeah. I like our bonus episodes yep. a lot. Uh, head on over to buymeacoffee.com slash two murder morons or scan the QR code on your screen for more information. Little as three bucks a month, bonus episodes. There's other tiers on there where you can be a producer yep. of the show. Producer of the show. Get your name out there. It's a... Uh, yeah, check yeah, it out. At least check go out. check it out and see what's on there. And you could just buy us a coffee. That's true. You can just it, you know, just one deal, like a one time little. Hey, nice show, guys. Yeah, nice show, guys. Get yeah. you get you some Starbucks. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also, merch we talked about a little bit before, uh, but you can also head to our website, visit our merch store. We got all kinds of cool stuff, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, Tumormorans.com or scan the QR code on your screen, and then you could be a. Walking billboard for us. You could be. And just tell everybody, hey, this is the best podcast I've listened to forever. And then those people listen to it or watch it, and they're like, oh, my God, this guy's great. Oh, I was going the other way. Oh, well, they could. I mean, uh, <laughs> I was going the other way with it. Hey, you know what I just realized? What? We went through the whole show. And we didn't do our disclaimer. Exactly. You want to do it this time since you hosted? Go no, for it. No, no, no. Go. Cheers. No, I'm going to put this on the whiteboard. Uh, oh, that a mess up because I yeah. forgot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, if you are watching this episode right now, uh, a little late, uh, and see, I'm, I'm messing it up already. I'm doing it backwards. Mm-hmm. If you're listening to this episode right now, mm-hmm. just know that we are also a video podcast. True. So you can see our bright shining faces and all the visuals we talk about on the show. You can view us on YouTube or Spotify. And if you're watching and would rather listen, we're also available on all major podcast platforms. Sound better? Yeah, we usually do that in the beginning. That's usually right off the bat. Right off the bat. I was excited about the crime coffee. True. Okay? True, true. We had to show the crime coffee, That's and right. then it just... It fell off. I forgot I about it. everything yeah, it's else. It's all right. That happens. I mean, you know, when you're getting close to 40. What? Thank you. Yeah. I'm a little past 40, but that's cool. Huh? I know. Oh. <laughs> you look so shy, huh? I had to think for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I put gel in my hair today, and it's just a mess. You're looking spry, man. I really am. I got all for you know coming out for four hours, probably out of my out of my day, whatever day this is. And uh, yeah, don't even know what day it is. I, I I thought it was Saturday. Oh, good lord! I know. Okay, on that note, I think we should end this episode. Man, it was a rough week. <laughs> I know it was. Yes, we'll have to tell Pretty that story. Shitty. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Oh, man, RVs are fun. We'll tell that story on another episode. Yeah. But thank you all for tuning in. We will see you guys next week. Yep. Thank you.